How can you have single sex spaces if somebody in three months can opt to become a man? I think the evidence would suggest is a man pretending to be a woman for the purposes of not being put in a male prison but being put in a, a female so prison. So you've answered a question that Nicola Sturgeon can't answer. The trans debate in Scotland has ignited a firestorm of abuse for Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland's First Minister, over a rapist, Isla Bryson, who Nicola Sturgeon can't seem to decide whether is a man or a woman. One of Nicola Sturgeon's greatest critics is one of her former greatest allies, Alex Salmon. He's now the leader of the ALBA party. I'm Peter Cardwell, political editor, and Alex Salmon joins me now. So Alex Salmond, this Isla Bryson controversy has really come a cropper for Nicola Sturgeon. What's your view on it? Well, it, it's a great puzzle actually because it's a, I mean, the whole process of, uh, of transgender rights and uh, it's a difficult issue. It's a, an, an issue about equalities. It requires really sensitive uh, handling. It's difficult to do it successfully. Uh, and it certainly shouldn't have become or allowed to become a constitutional battle. I mean, the very last thing you want is to, to mix up the Scottish constitutional question with this, uh, this issue of, uh, of social rights and equality and the tension between transgender rights on the one hand and women's rights on the other. I mean, that is the underlying tension because the, if you uh, allow self-identification just on a three-month period with no other criteria, and if you have, as we've had in Scotland, a, a court judgment uh, in December from Lady Haldane, which said, look, if you have a gender recognition certificate, then, then you, you've changed your sex for all legal purposes. Uh, then, of course, what women's campaigners say quite rightly is how can you have single sex spaces if somebody in three months can opt to become a man? And of course, you also open up the field uh, for what we might call bad faith actors like Isla Bryson, mm -hmm. who the evidence would suggest is a man who's pretending to be a woman so she can get into a woman's prison. Uh, uh, and these things are, when you walk them through, make it impossible uh, to defend the hard won women's rights that campaigners have striven for over the years enshrined in the Equalities Act and how this hasn't been recognised uh, to avoid this uh, conflict we're in. I've got absolutely no idea whatsoever but it's a huge fix and it has to be fixed for the sake not of the Scottish National Party which is no longer my concern but for the sake of the independence movement, to avoid this well, damaging the independence movement. Let's get into that, Alex Salmon, in a second. But just for the avoidance of doubt, just for our viewers, do you believe Isla Bryson is a man or a woman? Oh, I think the evidence would suggest she's a man pretending to be a woman for the purposes of not being put in a male prison, but being put in a, a female prison. So you've answered a question that Nicola Sturgeon can't answer at the moment, has refused to answer at various points. Thank you, uh, First Minister. Um, I think you just referred to Ireland Bryson using the word her. Does that mean you do, in fact, think Don't she is a woman? Anything into I, I am trying to rationally. To individual, Look, but you started I, saying I'm, her. What I'm trying to do is address the issues rather than take it into the kind of. Uh, you know, headline generating. I I'm trying to rationally deal with the issues that arise here. Let me ask you another one that Keir Starmer doesn't seem to be able to answer and that Nicola Sturgeon doesn't seem to be, a be able to answer. What is a woman? Well, I think uh, uh, an adult human female would be my answer uh, to that. But you see, the, when you get politicians who get themselves into the stage, you know, talented politicians like Keir Starmer or, or Nicola Sturgeon, they, they start to be re reduced to incoherence as Nicola Sturgeon has. I mean, she's one of the most talented communicators uh, that has been in politics, no question about that. If she's reduced to that level of incoherence, then there's clearly something wrong with the, the position she's trying to defend. And if she doesn't get off this hill, then, well, the SNP will suffer, not my concern, but the independence movement. You must not die on this hill, and that's why I've... Uh, I made the intervention, albeit a burden supper, a very famous burden supper. <laughs> That's, I should do more of this. I should make speeches at burden well, supper and let other people put them on the internet. Well, indeed. It's interesting, actually, because you've heaped <laughs> praise on Nicola Sturgeon there, but uh, it, whilst also saying that now she's been reduced to rambling incoherence. But some people would say this is just political opportunism from you. What would you say to that charge? No, I mean, there's been a, a consistent position from the Alipa party over the last two years, since its formation, or almost two years, I mean, many of the, the people who founded the Alipa Party were women's rights campaigners on this issue who saw the difficulty at a time, you know, 
Two years ago, virtually nobody across society, I mean, obviously campaigners did, the, the politically informed did, those who in, engaged in this argument did. But if, if you went around the, the doorsteps and, uh, and said, you know, worried about this transgender mm, legislation, mm, you'd be mm. with a blank stare. What will on it earth are you talking about? Will, will it become a defining issue, do you think? Because everybody's talking about it at the moment. But is anybody actually going to vote on it, do you think? Well, it, it wouldn't become a defining issue if we got the national movement off the, this hill. That and Nicholas back to Stagel, independence, uh, which you would to, like. And back to independence. If you like, so out of self-identification uh, and back to self-determination, which is where the, the national movement should be. But, but if this uh, issue was prolonged, I mean, we're now in a situation where what's happening, much to the detriment and state of transgender people in Scotland, uh, the press are looking for anything that associates transgender with crime. Mm -hmm. uh, story mm -hmm. after story. Uh, and that means that what will happen in public association where you associate transgender people mm -hmm. with criminals. And that's actually doing harm to transgender people, yeah. who you said in your very first answer, deserve our understanding. That's right, uh, absolutely correct. So from their point, from transgender's point of view, you need to get off this argument as it's currently deployed. From the national movement's point of view, if Nicola Sturgeon, for example, does as she said she's going to do, say, right, I'm taking the Scottish Secretary to court for his for his veto of this legislation. Now, look, I don't agree with the veto of the legislation. I mean, I, in principle, think Scotland should sort but out... But you this. disagree with the issue? Yes, I, it should sort out our own mess. I mean, this is a, a mess created by the Scottish Parliament, by the Scottish Government, and the Scottish Parliament should sort it out. But nonetheless, uh, you're now in a position where Nicola Sturgeon says she's going to take the Scottish Secretary to court, so the issue will rumble on. And it's, it's particularly important. Well, it's important that, that doesn't happen. The, the best thing to do in an issue as sensitive as this it would be to, oh, well, come to a compromise. I mean, uh, accept the invitation to talks. Make sure the Scottish Secretary does it. See if you can get to an agreed position between the, the legislation on the one hand and the Equalities Act on the other. But surely some of your critics would say that's actually allowing the Westminster government to have a greater say in Scottish politics against the democratic will of the Scottish Parliament, is it not? Well, significantly, I mean, the one thing I would say that there were amendments put forward by nine SNP rebels. Now listen, the, the, the SNP that uh, I helped build uh, was notoriously disciplined as a political party. I mean, I mean, uh, but the discipline I had was self-discipline. You know, people were disciplined, not, not for the sake of, you know, being, you know, following the leader, but for the sake of, uh, you know, striving towards the goal of, of Scottish independence. Now, if you get to the stage where nine members of the Scottish Parliament, SNP members, rebel probably for the first time ever in their political lives, it should tell you, there should be a signal there's something wrong. Now, what's interesting is they put forward amendments, very sensible amendments, uh, amendments, for example, about, look, if people are charged with sexual offences, then you know, it should stay the ability to get a gender recognition certificate, which would have solved the, uh, the Isla Bryson case, for example. Uh, these amendments were voted down, but voted down very narrowly. So you could go back and say, well, let's have another look at these. Now, now that the, there's been an example of the problem that these people were pointing to, and nobody can doubt after the last week that it's a, a, a major issue, and to stop it reoccurring, let, let's accept these amendments, find a consensus in the Parliament, take that consensus to the, the Scottish sector and see if you can get a settlement. You need to take the the sting out of this issue. You need to de-escalate and get on, in the case of the national movement, to the issues where we want to fight. Well, it's interesting you talk about issues where you want to fight and you're saying this is clouding things. How does Nicola Sturgeon get it back on track? Of course, you wouldn't want to give her necessarily advice in order to do that, but you'd want to get independence back on track from your own perspective. How does she get over this? Well, I, I'm not certain uh, Nicola Sturgeon will want to take my advice, <laughs> but, but, but certainly, you know, when you, when you make a a significant mistake, which most people would say she, she has done, a misstep, let's call it that, then the thing to do is get off that as quick. Don't, don't die on that hill. Get off it as quick as possible in an honourable, decent way and, uh, and de-escalate the situation. I mean, there's another reason why I think she should definitely do that. I mean, Nicola Sturgeon has talked about using next year as a, a de facto, next year's elections, Westminster elections, the back end of next year as a de facto referendum on independence because Westminster is denying Scotland's right to self-determination. Now, I, myself, many people in the SNP don't believe using a Westminster election to do that mm -hmm. is, is a sensible thing to do. Why? Because the issue will not be dictated by Scottish independence. It will be about who's going to be the next Prime Minister of the 
the yes, UK. Yes, which is a whole separate uh, level yeah, of issues separate, and all the rest And of therefore, it, yeah. I mean, that, the problem with that is even if you win it, and it's a, you know, it's a high, high bar to get a majority of votes, which is the aim, even if you win it, the, the, the legitimacy of it will be questioned. Oh, that's not what the election was about. It was about Westminster politics. So the best place, if you're fighting a de facto election, the best place to fight it is in Hollywood. That's, that's the parliament to fight it on. The best time to fight it is now where the, where the issue is live. So my advice on that would be use Hollywood and collapse the parliament for October the 19th this year, which was the promised date of the referendum that's been denied, and say that's the test on independence, on home ground, not, not playing the match away from home. Luckily, one of the few things that have been conceded to Scotland in recent years after the 2014 referendum is the ability to amend the Scotland Act, mm -hmm. to do exactly that. Now, people say to me, oh, well, what will happen is Westminster will intervene, the Supreme Court will say you can't. <laughs> Listen, if the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom dictated to the Scottish Parliament, that majority of that Parliament couldn't decide to hold an election. I think that's unlikely. Yeah. Then, then, of yeah. course, you, you would be in, uh, well, does you'd, it, does been, you'd be in the rapids of revolution. Does it aggrieve you that you are someone who built the SNP with Nicola Sturgeon? You were close friends at one point. You were very, very strong political allies. And now your job is to oppose her and to make life difficult for her. Does that, does that have an effect on you? Well, I mean, I'd much prefer that uh, that wasn't the case, but I think Alipa is necessary precisely because someone has to be trying to keep the national movement on the uh, the high ground of striving for Scottish independence. Now, the good thing about it, I mean, is that, you know, if we get the referendum or an election, because one of the other benefits of fighting in a whole year election is there's both constituency seats and list seats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can win a majority of seats for independence on the... Uh, on the constituency and a majority for independence on the party vote on the list where Alipa could stand, you see. Uh, so uh, for all sorts of reasons, once there is that test, whether it be a referendum or a de facto uh, uh, election referendum, uh, then you'll find the national movement will come together and all past differences will be put aside. The difficulty is, of course, that we're not there or have any real sign of, of getting there from the a government which has many mandates to do exactly that. Just one final question on Nicola Sturgeon. You're someone who understands Nicola Sturgeon probably better than most people having known her for a very, very long time. Why do you think she's doing this? Why do you think this is the hill on which she might die politically? I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, and, you know, I, over many years, I knew Nicola really well. I didn't detect any real interest in, in this area of politics at all. Uh, I, whether it's to look for a, a legislative legacy, I, I, I have no idea. I, I mean, or, or, or perhaps the motivation is as it should be, just to benefit the lives of transgender people. If so, where we are now is not doing that. And if so, it's about the issue itself, then you should deal with the issue separate from the Constitution. You shouldn't allow an issue about people's lives to get merged into the Constitution. Look, if you want a constitutional battle with Westminster, there's no shortage of good ground to battle on. The European issue, Scotland getting dragged out of the single market, damaging the economy, damaging the health service. Or even better, I mean, you know, I was canvassing a local by-election in Aberdeen on, on Saturday afternoon in the day, and people were coming to the door with their coats on. Because it was so cold, they could put their heating on. If you want a battle, a constitutional battle with Westminster, then fuel poverty for a million people or more in and a land of energy, plenty. Battle on that, or battle on the right of self-determination. Alex Salmon, thank you very much indeed.